Hi, in this lecture I'm going to walk you through the circuit schematic for the terrarium controller of this project. And of course I have drawn the schematic using KiCad and I've also used KiCad to design the PCB that I'm going to show you in a later lecture in this section. The main component of the circuit and in this schematic as you can see is the dev kit itself. I am using the dev kit with the 38 pin configuration which is a very common version of the ESP32 dev kit. You can easily find it on eBay or other retailers uh, on the web. On the breadboard I have tested the exact same circuit with the 30 pin version of the ESP32 dev kit. So you can use whichever you want as long as the pins that you are connecting to the various peripherals are the same. So we've got the 38 pin ESP32 dev kit in the middle. Most of the pins are unused and I'm not exposing them even in the PCB that I've designed again as part of this project that I'm going to talk about in a separate lecture. On the left side, I've got the connectors for the sensors. Uh, up here, J5 is the DHD22 connector and terminal. It's a screw terminal, as you can see from the schematic, um, using a version of the DHD22, which got a, it's got a, a special casing that I can install inside the terrarium and get the air temperature and the air humidity. So it's got three pins ground, VCC, and I'm connecting the data pin to GPIO25. Right, then we've got the moisture sensor. The moisture uh, sensor comes in a module with four pins uh, and I've got a, a simple header, a female header on the PCB itself to which the uh, module is connected to. Three pins are used. Uh, the second pin here is unused. So I've got uh, an unused mark on it. Just in case at some point in the future I want to use an environment sensor like the two, uh, the BME or BMP 280, I've made a provision for a connector for this sensor here for the I2C protocol, uh, although uh, I'm, I did not really use it, at least in the current version of the project. Then I've got... Um, a bunch of uh, indicator LEDs. I've got one for the power just to indicate when power is applied and I've got another couple of LEDs that show me various types of activity. For example the circuit will blink these LEDs when there is a temperature humidity or a motor operation uh, update so that I can visibly see what is going on. Now down here I've got a couple of circuits, just voltage dividers to give me a voltage indicator. This one here is for the battery and this one here is for the MCU, the microcontroller unit. Now for the MCU, I've made a provision to be able to power it either from the same power source as the, the battery or from its own 3.3 volt power source. So depending on how you want to power the microcontroller, you can just um, short these two uh, jumpers and um, you'll be able to provide appropriate power. If you use a jumper wire to short these two terminals, then you'll be powering your MCU from the external five volt pin. Otherwise it will be powered by the 3.3 volt pin. Let's move over to the right side of the diagram. I'm going to zoom out a little so we can see the whole lot. Okay, here we go. So there's a couple of different ways to power the circuit. Uh, I've got the battle jack switch up here and also screw terminals where you connect a motor battery. So the motor battery is meant to provide at least five volts of power, uh, but no more than nine volts, which will feed directly to, into the motor. You can see that the screw terminals here, J4, is where you connect the motor. Now the motor, of course, is what powers the pump. Alternatively, what you can do is you can also use the same power source that powers the motor to also power the uh, microcontroller unit. So there's a jumper here that can enable that connectivity. Apart from that, whether you use the J3 connector for the motor power source or the battle switch uh, is the same thing. Uh, you can use one or the other, but of course not both at the same time. Below that, we've got the simple circuit for the uh, motor that powers the water pump. I've got a short key diode here and a small 
capacitor. The capacitor is here to try and dampen down any electrical noise that comes from the motor while it's spinning. And then the short kit diode prevents back currents from uh, passing on to the rest of the circuit when the motor is no longer powered, but it's just uh, is, is free spinning as it's slowing down. That could produce current that can damage other parts of the circuit and especially the microcontroller. So we've got this diode here to prevent that from happening. And then down the bottom of this part of the circuit, we've got a TIP122 transistor, which I'm using as a switch uh, the combination of the 330 ohm and the 20 kilo ohm uh, pull down resistor right here allow us to turn this switch on with a very small amount of current coming from gpio 32. and that's about it with this circuit as you can see it's fairly simple you can easily implement it on a breadboard or you can go for a proper PCB. I've already designed that as, I'm, as I said, and I'm going to show you uh, what that PCB looks like in a later lecture in this section.